top of the day, beautiful people, top of the day. Sorry for my tardiness. Um, today's one of the days I hit the clock and went back to sleep. Then I woke up. Oh, snap. Auntie Grand Rising, Blissful Rising, Vinette, greetings, greetings, Anita, Shalom, Shalom. Uncle Nathaniel, Grand Rising. All right, beautiful people. All right, y'all. Happy Sunday. It is July the 24th, 2022, day 167 of year four of reading through the books of the law and the prophets. Another four year consecutive day count, day 1,185. And today we're picking up on page 342 in Owaspi in the book of wars against Jehovah. We left off that yesterday. So let's get started. Father, we thank you that we're here. Better late than never. Mom, grand rising. Set apart living, grand rising. I thought I saw my mom, I didn't. All right, y'all. Page 342, chapter 24. Of the Japhethan assaults. Ali, Shalom, Shalom. Okay. <clears throat> Anusahaj, alias the Lord God, had said to Tain, the false, to whom he gave in charge Japheth and her heavenly places, in the selfsame time that Osiris and his hosts fall upon his divisions of the earth, even in that day and hour shalt thou and thy hosts fall upon Japheth, China, possessing the temples and altars and places of oracles where they serve the great spirit under the name Ormaz, and thou shalt subdue them to me under the name Joss, J-O-S-S, who is and ever shall be Hojas, H O dash. J O S S, and who shall ever be Hojas of heaven and earth? So Tan the false, with his thousand million warriors, sped forth downward to the earth, widespread his army to cover the whole of Japheth and hope to capture it suddenly. And even as Osiris plunged into the temples and oracle houses and about the altars in the dead of night to drive away Jehovah's guardian angels. So like him, and even worse, Tan was baffled and repulsed and saw the morning sun arise upon his shame and total failure. And then he too, with his mighty legions, went, stalk went stalking about all day long on the earth, waiting for the next night's assault on sleeping mortals and to receive new orders from the Lord God as to the next proceeding. I still ain't really, well, I guess they may have told us. I'm trying to figure out why I guess, because they figure because we sleeping. Uncle JB, Shalom. Audrey, Shalom. I guess, yeah, you gotta, yeah. It's hooked onto my bag. Um, they always doing their assaults at night. Shebrew, all praises to the creator. Listen, they always do that, well, the majority of their assaults at night while we're sleeping. Um, but that... That doesn't mean that they don't do assaults in the day, because clearly I've seen assaults happen during the day. But I think for the most part, because everybody's sleeping, they think they might have a a, a hand up. We got one of y'all asleep, and if you lack in that faith, we'll just wait till you go to sleep. That way we know we can overpower your ashar or guardian angel, hopefully. So that seemed like how they get an the upper hand on on those ones, that, that list of ones, remember? The ignorant, the superstitious, lazy, and lustful, and those who lack faith in Jehovah and the sons and daughters of the rich. Verse 3, page 342, chapter 24. Then came the second night, and Tan went in with his army, furious because of the last night's cowardly failure. And to the sleeping mortals, men, women, and children, hid them with, oath, with oaths and loud blastings, what, is that head? H I E D hide, hide them with oaths and loud boastings, threatening Jehovah's angels with the tortures of hell if they did not instantly resign all unto Hojas, the all highest ruler, dweller in Horeb. But faithful stood the Jehovians, laid their hands on the sleeping mortals, and became all powerful against the terrible odds 
and held them in abeyance again till the sun arose and scattered Tan's host, ashamed and sulky and most pitiful defeat, of which news Tan now most painfully sent to his commanding God, to him, even as to Osiris, Osiris Deus sent word to the... They have sent word to next attack the houses of the men of learning, the unbelievers and the ignorant, the superstitious, to abandon for present the arks and temples and oracle houses and the faithists firmly sworn. They have said, send thou thy enumerators and mathematicians and measure and mark all mortals in Japheth as to their vulnerable points and map their localities. And when thou hast completed this work, set apart another night for an attack upon them. And thy host shall fall not upon the faithless who are firm in the great spirit or mas, but upon the weak and disbelieving, the skeptical and much learned philosophers who are weak in spirit, and thou shall not fail. Just because you real learned and you got a lot of head knowledge. If your spirit is weak, bruh, you are for the taking. Hold on, let me highlight this. So it's good that we uh, have an even balance of spirit and mortal knowledge and all that good stuff that can help us advance here on the earth. Yeah, do not neglect your spirit, people. Let me read on verse 5 again. Page 342, chapter 24, verse 5. To him, even as to Osiris, Deus sent word to next attack the houses of the men of learning, the unbelievers and the ignorant, the superstitious, to abandon for the present the arks and temples and oracle houses and the faithists firmly sworn. Deus said, send thou thy numerators and mathematicians and measure and mark all mortals in Japheth as to their vulnerable points and map their localities. And when thou hast completed this work, set apart another night for an attack upon them. And thy host shall not fall upon the faithless who are firm in the great spirit or mas, but upon the weak and disbelieving, the skeptical and much learned philosophers who are weak in spirit, and thou shall not fail. Jan Grand Rising. Verse 6, so Tan enumerated the Japhethans as commanded, marking them as to their vulnerable points, whether in disbelief in spirit, or if given to lust, or to hasty passions, or to telling lies, or to stealing, or to murder, or to hypocrisy, or to desire for leadership. That's another whole thing is those that desire leadership just to be, the, I'm, I'm, I'm the leader of this. And that actually going through the, I guess you can say the appropriate training to be raised as a leader. Oh, buddy, they get all kinds of tripped up, chopped and screwed along the way. And before the time of battle, Tan knew the grade of every mortal in Japheth. And he called his generals and captains before him in his heavenly place, Chesugao, over the Chasian Mountains, 20 miles high, showing them the list and maps. Take these, he said, and distribute them before my mighty armies, and ere tomorrow night they shall learn every mortal's place and quality, and in the night my legions shall rush upon the places, laying hands on the sleeping mortals, thus gaining power, and they shall hurl missiles with terrible noises through the houses of the sleepers and so arouse them to awake and behold the war of heaven carried to their homes. Tiffany, hey girl, hey. The generals and captains took the list and maps and had millions of copies made of them and sent them into all the regions of Deus militants. And besides, sent proclaimers, millions and millions with terrible oaths against the great spirit but who extolled the munificence of Deus to the utmost, appealing to their love of independence and to their power to cast off all other rulers forever, save Hojas. And now, when the night of battle came, the infuriated 
angel warriors of Tan marched in lines, millions strong toward the sleeping mortals, spread abroad their great armies, covering the land of Japheth from east to west and from north to south, over Flagilo, the city of the sun, were sent 30 million of Tan's warring angels, sworn to subjugate the people of great learning, alive or dead, and scatter the angels of Jehovah or bind them to cast them into hell. Over the city of Pengu were Tan's hosts, 20 million, and over the cities of Si and Wong and Hezo and Neking and Zuwan, each 20 million of Tan's angels of war. Besides these, there were millions and millions stationed over the great valley of Wan and in the mountains of Sojan. In the plains of Walgan were stationed 70 million. Five million were allotted to each of the cities to wit, Sumkonk, Agi, Asin, Changha, Gi, Uyung, Gan, Guk, Na, Tij, Yuk, Ho, Atash, Akon, Chong, Shan, Nufo, Zhao, Lin, Gibak, Uwa, Tadong, Kingdo, Gisam, Siung, Chong, Daf. Clearly, we know this is China. <laughs> Ling Ling. No, I added that one. No. <laughs> Uwa, Tadong, Kingdo. Chi Sam, Siung, Cha, Da, Ja, Bing Ta, Ga, Haya, Hug, Wing Zi, Niam, Ha Sam, and Zhao Lin. Verse 11, page 343. In the mountains of which Halu were stationed 80 million, laying for the Listian breed of men, on the borders of the sea for seafaring men and for their wives and children were 190 million of Tan's angel soldiers ready for the assault. Besides these, there were tens of thousands of smaller armies stationed in the small cities of, stationed in the small cities and country places waiting for the signal. Now in this age, Japheth had attained to great wisdom in many things, especially save in war, in which her people were as babes. More than half her people were faithists, followers of Po, worshipers of the great spirit. And they practiced peace and dwelt in communities. Even many, even many of the cities were in families of tens and hundreds and thousands, but nowhere were more than 2,000. So we remember that back in, um, I forget which book. It, it could have been the book of divinity. Maybe not. Could have been before that. But they was talking about when they developed the cities, do them in families of tens and hundreds and thousands, but um, no more than 2,000 per city. And the city families were after this manner, that is to say, the manufacturers of cloth of wool, one family, of cloth of linen, another family, of cloth of silk, another family, of leather, another family, of paper, another family, of transportation, another family, and so on. So it would be like the cities, they could trade with the other little small cities because this city is known for this. Just like you have now, you got family businesses and stuff. Yep, that's exactly what's happening. Let me read that. Let me read that again. Even many of the cities were in families of tens and hundreds and thousands, but nowhere more than 2,000. And the city families were after this manner. That is to say, the manufacturers of cloth of wool, one family, of cloth of linen, another family, of cloth of silk, another family, of leather, another family, of paper, another family, of transportation, another family, and so on, until all the departments were full. And of these combinations, there were cities of 50,000 and 100,000 and 200,000 inhabitants. And in the country places were, and in the country places, there were small cities whose people tilled the soil and gathered the fruits of the earth, and they exchanged goods with the manufacturers who dwelt in large cities. 
The government was by priests, one for each communion family, and the priests who were called Washan were the receivers and distributors of goods, and they ministered in the temples and at the altars of worship in the name of the great spirit Ormaz, sometimes called Poetan, and sometimes Eolin by other name and by other names also. Verse 14, page 343. Besi Besides the schools and colleges, there were houses of philosophy and houses of prophecy and houses of astronomy, thousands and thousands. The Japhethans were large, being Ehuans with one degree more of the Browns people blood in them than the Parsians, nor in all the world was there at that time, so strong a people and clean and jovial, high aspiration with great gentleness. And because the land was tilled and made to bloom on every side, the angels of heaven named it the flowery kingdom. And because the people reveled in song and poetry and oratory, they were called lambs of the great spirit and the flush of springtime. And these things were well known to Deus and to Tain the false, and to hundreds of millions of assaulting angels sworn to subdue them to Hojas or to everlasting destruction. Mom, shalom. Look, I said hi to you earlier. I thought I saw your name, but I was actually looking at it. I just glanced real quick, quick and I saw the next name. Okay. Verse 17. But because of the power of Jehovah, with the most faithful of the faithless, the arks and temples of worship had stood unharmed by the satanic raid. Equally so, the Tayans failed to overpower the great spirit's guardian angels. So now, after due preparation, the time came for another contest, this time upon the least Jehovah-like of mortals. On the other hand, the true God, son of Jehovah, sent word from his throne in Kreoshebi to the guardian angels dwelling with these mortals, so unmindful of the Father's care. He said, come, defeat or disaster. He said, come, defeat or disaster or terrible darkness, overpowering your utmost strength. Still, sh still struggle ye. Hold on, let me read the whole thing again. Yes, son. Mm. You just want to say what's up? Mm. Okay. He said, come defeat or disaster or terrible darkness, overpowering your utmost strength. Still struggle ye in the name Jehovah. The true faith is knoweth nothing impractical, but doeth his utmost for his highest light. Though failure stare him in the faith, in the face. I'll read that again. The true faithist knoweth nothing impractical, but doeth his utmost for his highest light, though failure stare him in the face. For once distrust of weakness entereth the human soul, the man slideth backward down the hill of faith, whilst he who will not consider results, save to serve Jehovah right on, fail or not, riseth even though his project failed. That's good. Let me read that again. So it pretty much said, look, if they're full of faith in Jehovah, whatever they're doing, even if that failed, it causes them still to excel because you learn from your lesson. They didn't say that, but that's what it's saying. Let me read it again. Verse 19, uh, page 343. For once distrust of weakness entereth the human soul, the man slideth backward down the hill of faith, while he while he who will not consider results save to serve Jehovah right on, fail or not, riseth, even though his project fail. With this, oh, I definitely highlight this. And that's true. Because you will consider your ways, consider everything that happened. Okay, what happened that caused me to fail this last time? Okay, we're going to try it again, Father. Let's go. We're going to adjust this a little bit. And let's try it again. Verse 20, with this and no other word from Jehovah, the faithless stood about their weakness and helpless 
wards on the low earth, waiting for the thousand millions hands, but not in any lengthened suspense. For when the sun stood with the widest part of the earth between the midnight hour, the militants came rushing on with oaths, with oaths most hideous, and by their dense flood of numbers reached the sleeping mortals and laid hands on them. Then, with joy, run to madness because of triumph, sent hurling around about apparatuses in the dwellings, and in many places with audible speech, thus held forth in the dark to the affrighted mortals. From Saint to I come to lay in the dust every mortal born that would not down in reverence to Hojas, ruler of the worlds, Give ear, O oh man, the anger of heaven's creator is let loose upon a disobedient race. It sound like, it sound like Christianity, right? If you love me, I love you. But if you hate me, you're going to hell. Verse 22. Remember, this is the false God. Once they, they frighten the mortals and things is going crazy in their house and they don't see nobody in their room but them. Furniture's flying around. Oh my God, what is going on? When that happens and they startle them, then they begin to speak to them out of the darkness, which we learned yesterday. So now it's dark. Things is flying around. They only see them and now they're hearing voices, right? Listen. And so one of the false voices said, verse 22, page 343, from saint to I come to lay in the dust every mortal born that will not down in reverence to Hojas, ruler of worlds, Give ear, O oh man, the anger of heaven's creator is let loose upon a disobedient race. And then to give semblance of truth to the words, the angel intruder is let fly such knocks and poundings that they moved many a house on its foundation and roused the mortals, panic stricken, to find the cause or to hasten them quickly to repentance and prayers. Mm, you know us, we scary. So we're like, Father, I'm sorry, what did I do? Oh my God, I didn't open the door to the devil. Okay, so after they moved many a house on its foundation, after foundation, there is reference to letter L, which looks like a one, but I know it's not a one because ain't no numbers at the bottom of this page. So it has to be an L. So let's go to page 387 and L says many spiritualists have witnessed the oscillation of houses by the spirits I have witnessed the shaking of large brick houses and seen the walls and ceilings cracked across by the spirits in the same way 1882 edition and clearly we at least I know I have my family we've seen some freaking crap happening when we know ain't nobody else there with us right yo man let me say you my aunt got the best stories not the best but <laughs> the stuff that used to happen in her house on lafayette boulevard in the uh, in the uh, norfolk yo i could sit and listen to my aunt all day tell them stories it's like it's, it's better than watching scary movies yo it's crazy all right, verse 24. Let me read. Let me read 22 again. From Saint 2, I come to lay in the dust every mortal born that were not down in reverence to Hojas, ruler of the worlds. Give ear, O oh man, the anger of heaven's creator is let loose upon a disobedient race. And then to give semblance of truth to the words, the angel intruders let fly such knocks and poundings that they many a house on its foundation and rouse the mortals panic stricken to find the cause or to hasten them quickly to repentance and prayers but not all was their victory for the Jehovians firmly held the power in hundreds of thousands of places and yet the Tayans had a wonderful victory Tayan quickly sent word to Deus exalting and exaggerating the victories won and in turn, Deus congratulated him and his army, his thousand million, who now anchored on the earth and with mortals, frolicked about in all regions. And in Japheth, in course of time, the same questions arose as in Arabinia, questions from mortals to the spirits as to the destination of the soul of man. 
as to the origin of things, as to the heavenly places. And tell you, hold on, that was a question. Verse 26. And in Japheth, in course of time, the same questions arose as in Arabinia. Questions from mortals to spirits, as in the destination of the soul of man, as to the origin of things, as to the heavenly places. And Tain, in turn, sent word up to Deus and Horeb as to what answer should be given. So after they then took over some of these places with the scary humans that lack faith in Jehovah or the great spirit, now they're asking questions. Okay, well, where do we come from? Where does man come from? And what's the destination of the soul of man when we leave from here? And what else? And what about the heavenly places? Are there any? What are they like, right? Okay. And Tan in turn sent word up to Deus and Horrid as to what answer should be given. It was thus that he too was summoned to Saint Tu and Horrid to meet with Osiris and Baal and Ashtaroth and Sutga, subduer of Vidu. All right, next chapter. Chapter 25 on page 344 of the Waspi. And the, the um, subtitle under chapter 25 is Of the Viduan Assault. Sudga the False, sent by Deus to overturn the great spirit's dominion in Vidu and to establish the highest heavenly place, Urvatus, and Horde is in, in brackets. So Ur, Urvatus is another name for Horde. Okay. Urvatus, Horde was wiser than Osiris or Tan in his wicked work. For he permitted not his army, his thousand millions, to rush on for the places of worship and for the oracle houses, but most deliberately halted his forces in Horeu, the lowest heavenly place over the mountains of Vivrat and Vidu, three miles high and broad as the earth, and a commanding situation. Whence, in a sure way, he sent his measurers on ahead down to the earth to measure mortals as to their weakness and strength and faith in Jehovah, Ormaz, and other rulers heavenly to map them and mark them and to number them. Great was the peace and beauty and glory of Vidu in that day. Her rivers and canals coursed the country over and her industrious sons and daughters, 200 million were in the eyes of the angels the pride and glory of the earth. Hundreds of thousands of her people were prophets and seers, and so abundant was spiritual light amongst the people that even those who had learned but one language could understand and speak other languages with people from remote parts, words and sentences they had never heard even when first meeting strangers. Like the inhabitants of Japheth, as to government and industry, mostly by the exchange of goods and not by buying and selling, live the Viduans. This was their weakest point as to an assault. Sudga said to his generals and captains, only by confounding the languages of these people can they be broken up and subdued. I got to check something out. Okay, verse 4, page 344. Suga said to his generals and captains, only by confounding the languages of these people can they be broken up and subdued. Behold, they are becoming as gods, knowing and understanding in advance words spoken. What then is the greatest liable shortness, save we confound them suddenly in the meaning of words? Fall ye upon them and possess them and obsess them, all who are easily captured, get ye a foothold here and there in the first place, and in their commerce, cripple them. It sounds kind of like the Tower of Babel, right? Verse 5, Sudga said, It is a strong city that maketh all kinds of goods. It is a weak place indeed that dependeth on another, which is far off. Such people are easily tripped up. Behold, I will teach these people that I am the militant before whom every knee shall bow, or in failing to win them thus, I will set city against city 
and country place against country place, all against one another, for which their superabent, yeah, for which their superabent languages will furnish excellent material. Sudga opened the door at night for his host to fall on the weakest of mortal, the weakest of mortals as to faith and Ormaz, who had become as a stale story to hundreds of thousands of men and women. That has got to be in our title today. Hold on. Verse 6. Oh, you're fine. Suga opened the door at night for his host to fall on the weakest of mortals as to faith in Ormaz, who had become as a stale story to hundreds of thousands of men and women. In Vidyu had women risen in knowledge. In Vidyu had women risen in knowledge higher than the highest of women in other parts of the world. In the houses of philosophy and houses of science, women were foremost as to men and skeptical as to the Ormazian power. On rushed Sutta's legions, and even as Osiris and Tien won in the third assault, so now Sutta in the first. And he too sent word to Deus and exaggerated beyond all bounds of truth as to his victories. Nevertheless, his hosts were sufficiently anchored on the earth to claim an everlasting victory for Deus and to establish his name. And here also, after a few years, the questions came from mortals asking thus, Behold, ye cut off the heavens of the ancients, the Novanian regions beyond Chinvat. Ye teach us that Deus is the all-high ruler. What then is the all-highest for man? How came the worlds? Whence came man? How was the creation created? To, which, to answer which Suga sent to Deus for instructions. And Deus sent to Suga, even as to the other gods, an invitation to meet in Horeb, to hear the words of the Lord God, to learn his commands. He's stalling. Oh, that's a good question. Hold on, listen, I'm up. I'm going to have a meeting. I want y'all, all y'all to come together, right? We're going to set it about a month down the road, give him some time to pull his answers together. And here also, after a few years, the questions came from mortals asking thus, Behold, ye cut off the heavens of the ancients, the Nirvanian regions beyond Chinvat. Ye teach us that Deus is the all-high ruler. What then is the all-highest for man? What came the worlds? Whence came man? How was the creation created? To which Sutga sent to Deus for instructions. And Deus sent to Sutga, even as to other gods, an invitation to meet in Horeb, to hear the words of the Lord God, to learn his commands. Thus invited, thus went the five great warrior gods before Deus, taking with them each of his 10,000 attendants, besides thousands of trumpeters. Deus had a good feast prepared for them. He had sent receivers forth to meet them and conduct them to the sanctu in great splendor. Chapter 26, page 344. Great was the feast, the pomp and parade and glory in Horeb, when Deus' victorious gods and their companions and attendants came in answer to the summons of Anusahaj, Elias, the Lord God. The trumpeters of Horeb were stationed along more than a thousand miles on the heavenly roadways. And in turn, the trumpeters and heralds of the visiting gods extended in advance of the gods themselves an equally great distance. All the way were the roads lined with flags and banners and millions of spectators, the same who had formerly been in schools and colleges in heaven, but were now emancipated from the restrictions of self-improvement and used as applauders, applauders to sing and shout praises to Deus for his own glory. Ain't that something? We're going to take you off your learning track and all you do all day is clap for me. Verse 3. The table of the feast was private and in secret and only prepared for the gods and their close companions. One hundred all told, but the serving hosts numbered 
more than one million souls. Whilst at the feast, Deus said to Osiris, Speak thou of thy exploits in a bell and Ashtaroth and their valorous regions. Then Osiris explained the nature of the earth countries and of the battles and incidents, well exaggerating the last result. After Osiris had finished his story, Deus said to Tan, Speak thou of thy exploits and of thy generals and captains and of thy valorous legions. Whereupon Tan displayed the maps of the earth regions where he had been and his battles and final success also much exaggerated. And now, after he had finished his story, Deus said to Suga, Speak thou of thy generals and captains and thy valorous legions. Verse 7. Then Suga explained. Alazar, shalom, shalom. Verse 6. Whereupon Tan displayed the maps of the earth regions where he had been and his battles and final success also much exaggerated. And now, after he had finished his story, Deus said to Suga, Speak thou of thy generals and captains and thy valorous legions. Then Suga explained the earth region where he had fought and won, extolling his generals and captains and his hosts well exaggerated also. When they had all finished their hilarious accounts and applauded one another in sufficient zeal, in that same time, the feast of eating and drinking was also was ended also. Whereupon Anusahaj rose up and said, Whereupon Anusahaj rose up and said, I now declare the feast ended. Let the tables be removed. Behold, I will speak from the throne in private before my five gods only, save my own marshals. But unto all others, I declare a time of recreation and sport to be called again to duty when I have finished with my gods, of which my marshals will inform the trumpeters who shall sound the call. Speedily, now the attendants took away the tables and the hosts all withdrew, save the gods and Deus and his marshals. Whereupon Deus ascended the throne and then spake saying, I, the Lord your God, whom am Deus of heaven and earth, declare unto you, my gods and earth rulers, in mine own name, with love abounding, to declare my doctrines and creations before you. From all over the earth may be subdued alike unto me and mine forever, to surpass not my own age in my doctrines, nor to explain my axioms but to surpass the understanding of mortals sufficiently unto their knowledge of earthly things and so appease their curiosity as to the questions they put to ye, my gods. Hold on. That's what I thought this... This Reggie was saying, hold on, let me read this again. <laughs> Listen to this. Let me go back up. Listen to this, y'all. Verse 11, page 345. I, and I just, hold up, look. I'm just, I had to read it quietly because I was thinking about something while in church. I'm like, yo, you know what? This, this is, listen, verse 11. I, the Lord your God, who am Deus of heaven and earth, declare unto you, my gods and earth rulers in mine own name and with love abounding, to declare my doctrines and creations before you, that all the earth may be subdued alike unto me and mine forever, to surpass not my own age and my doctrines, right? He said, look, none of y'all surpass me in my age and my doctrines, right? Y'all got that? Listen. To surpass not mine own age and my doctrines, nor to explain my axioms, but to surpass the understanding of mortals sufficiently unto their knowledge of earthly things, and so appease their curiosity as to the questions they put to ye, my gods. 
verse 14, neither will I bind myself as Ahura did, for I will not explain who I am, save that man is mine own likeness, nor when the beginning of things was. So he said, I don't care what questions they ask. I ain't answering Nathan. <laughs> you can answer questions, anything above the earthly um, the earthly knowledge that they currently have, you can answer it about the heavens. But anything about me and above me, I ain't got to explain myself. That's what I thought, right? Listen, verse 14, neither will I don't question God. <laughs> Who are you to ask questions of the great creator? Like all, the, all these little things start hitting me when you start asking certain type of questions. When they're the people you asking are stumped, and if they if they deem themselves to be the highest in your life, they'll be like, "Oh well, sister, it's just just some things you don't question God about." I'm like, "But why?" <laughs> Listen, verse fourteen. Neither will I bind myself as Ohura did, for I will not explain who I am, save that man is in mine own likeness nor when the beginning of things was. This heaven I created, and ye also bear witness that I have established the earth in me through your valorous deeds. I, who am your God, look not to the matters of a day or a year. Many times are as one time, for from this time forth forever, this heaven and earth are mine, time without end. Yep, this, this is a new Sahaj speaking in quite a few places in the Bible. Or somebody, if he's on a redemptive track, somebody that took up his false title, they say the same crap. Listen, verse 16. I, who am your God, look not to matters of a day or a year. My times are as one time, for from this time forth forever, this heaven and the earth are mine, time without end in which ye behold days and years, and the generations of men on earth pass rapidly. Who then shall think seriously of the inhabitants that are now yours and mine? Behold, the earth is fruitful. A thousand years are as but one day. Behold, the earth is fruitful. A thousand years are as but one day, and there shall spring up out of the earth Thousands of millions of souls newborn. For them are my answers shaped more than for such as are now. Behold, the earth is fruitful. A thousand years are but as one day. And there shall spring up out of the earth thousands of millions of souls newborn. For them are my answers shaped. More than for such as are now. Yeah, after you done had them squander their time here on earth, believing that you are the most high. Now when they leave here, they find out that you are the false. Of course their answers are going to be shaped. <laughs> this Regin, look. Verse 19. In the beginning, I created this heaven and earth unto mine own name and glory. For they were void and without order. Darkness was upon them. Whereupon I moved upon them, saying, Let there be light, and there was light. And I drew a line betwixt darkness and light, for they had worshipped the void instead of me. Wherefrom, ho, oh, ho, oh, oh. Okay, listen, listen what he just said, y'all. Hold on. Verse, verse, verse 19, let me start over. In the beginning, I created this heaven and the earth unto mine own name and glory. But they were void and without order. Darkness was upon them. Listen, yeah, Genesis, look. In Genesis, of course, we know that's what it's saying, Genesis 1 and 1, right? But remember another name that they call the great spirit in here, Jehovah? What is another name they call him? The void, the great void. Yo, listen, listen. In the beginning, I created this heaven and earth unto mine own name and glory, but they were void and without order. Darkness was upon them, or rather it was the light of the great creator upon them, right? For they were void and without order. Darkness was upon them, whereupon I moved upon them, saying, Let there be light, and there was light. 
And I drew a line betwixt darkness and light, for they had worshipped the void instead of me. That's crazy. It says in parentheses, they worship the void instead of me, the false. Hold on. Yes, baby. Okay. Verse 20, wherefrom I declare this morning and evening of the first day, and I have divided those that were void and established my firmament betwixt them, even as land betwixt water and water. And my firmament is heaven, and I made it to be over such as were void like water. Chapter 27, page 345. Osiris, being commanded of God to speak, said, Give us one day, O Deus, that we may digest this matter. Thereupon the Lord God gave them one day, and on the next, when they were assembled, the gods ratified every word Deus had spoken, and it was called the morning and evening of the second day. Again, Deus spake, saying, Let the waters of the earth be in one place, and the land appear Y'all, let me finish. Let me, let me keep reading. Again, they spake, saying, Let the waters of the earth be in one place, and the land appear unto itself, for it was so. And I saw the earth was good, and that heaven might reign thereon. And I saw that earth brought forth grass and trees and fruit and seeds, everything after its own kind. And I said, Behold, they are good. Neither attributed I evil unto anything on the earth, or in the waters, or in the air above. But I separated the light from darkness, and this, but I separated the light from darkness. This was the substance of my creation. Again, Osiris asked for a day that the gods might weigh the words of the Lord God, and this was the evening of the third day, and God gave them a day. And when they were assembled again, Deus said, Let there be gods. <clears throat> Let there be gods in the firmament the above the earth. Peace. Let there be gods in the firmament above the earth, and they shall separate the darkness from the light of the earth, that man may know me and my kingdoms. And my gods shall teach signs and seasons and days and years forever unto the sons of men. And I made myself to rule the light of the world, but Osiris, I made to rule the darkness of the world, which is the earth, my footstool. So they call it, he's calling the, the heavens light and the earth darkness. Verse 6, I read again. And my God shall teach signs and seasons and days and years forever unto the sons of men. And I made myself to rule the light of the world. But Osiris I made to rule the darkness of the world, which is the earth, my footstool. Again, Deus gave the gods one day to weigh the matter of his words and to ratify them, which they did. And this was the morning of the fourth day. Again, Deus said, let the waters of the earth bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that live and let the fowl fly above the earth in their firmament, for they are good. Let them be fruitful and multiply every living creature and fill the earth and the waters of the earth and the air above the earth and every creature after its own kind. Wherefore, my blessing is upon them. And the Lord God gave his gods a day to weigh his words and ratify them, which they did. And this was the morning of the fifth day. And they said, and now, my gods, let us make man in our own fashion and in Likeness. Hold up. Because we got to go to the back again. I'm going to finish reading the sentence. 
And then Dad said, and now, my God, so let us make man in our own fashion. And after fashion, it's a reference letter M. We're going to go to it in a second. Let us make man in our own fashion and in likeness of ourselves. Let them have dominion also, but over the fish and the waters and the fowl and the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every living creature upon the earth. Okay. So let's hop over to page 387 and find M. M. See Ezra Bible. Remember, the Holy Bible that we have is called the Ezra Bible, right? And we learned a little bit about the Ezra Bible. There's a whole chapter in here in the back about the Ezra Bible, the current Bible we have now. M. See Ezra Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man, etc. Whom was he talking to? Whom was helping him? 1882 edition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't normally use the NIV version. Let's go. I like New Living Translation. It don't matter. Somebody say, use the KJV. Hold on. Genesis 126. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. And in here, after wild animals, it actually has a reference to letter A that says, Genesis 1.26, probable reading of the original Hebrew text. See Syriac, Masoretic text, the earth. Okay. Okay. Oh, they asked a question. Okay, see Ezra Bible, Genesis 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man, etc. Then here's a query. It's actually asking a question, query. Who was he talking to? Who was helping him? 1882 edition. Okay. So let's go back. I'll read all verse 9 over again on page 345. Again, the Lord God gave his gods a day to weigh his words and ratify them, which they did. And this was the morning of the fifth day. And then they said, and now, my gods, let us make man in our own fashion and in likeness of ourselves. Let them have dominion also, but over the fish in the waters and the fowl in the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every living creature upon the earth. And ye shall go to them and say to them, In our own likeness are ye created, male and female, and God's, and God's blessing is upon you. Be ye fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the earth, and the fishes, and the fowl, every living creature on the earth, for they are yours forever. And behold, ye have every herb and seed and fruit which is on the face of the earth, and the roots that grow in the earth, and they shall be your food. But of whatsoever that have breath, the breath of life of man shall not eat. But of whatsoever hath breathed, the breath of life, man shall not eat. Verse 10. Again, Deus gave the gods a day of rest in order to weigh the matter and ratify it. And this was the morning of the sixth day. And again, they spake, saying, The Lord your God said unto thee, Osiris, and to thee, Tan, and to thee, Sudga, Search thou amongst mortals for one high and suest. For when I announce my doctrines, thou shalt go to such mortal and cause him to write my words, saying, Such are the words of the Lord thy God, in answer to which I bid ye all speak now before me. Verse 12, page 346. 
Osiris said, according to thy commandments, have I searched and found Thoth, the highest man in Suez, and he dwelleth in Arabinia. Then spake Tan, saying, in like manner also search I, and found Hong in my division of the earth, the highest man in Suez, and he dwelleth in Ho Hoesin. Then answered Sutga, saying, even so have I accomplished in Vidyu, and I have found one, and Rajan, and Rajan. Dea said to these mortals, go ye and give my doctrines in your own ways, according to the languages of mortals and their capacity to understand. Neither bind I you to my exact words, nor limit you, save that that I have spoken shall be the foundation. Thus ended, thus then ended the feast, and behold, it is the seventh day for which I sanctify it and declare a day of recreation. And after recreation, we have letter N. <clears throat> Let's see what this say. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought I was about to say something else. Look, okay. This completes the first chapter of Genesis and three verses of the second chapter, 1882 edition. Okay, I thought, mm, okay. I'm going to pull myself together. I'm like, wait a minute. What are you about to say? Hold on. Okay. Honestly, I thought it was about to start saying something about the Sabbath. I'm like, I hope we get the Sabbath right. We keep having to adjust the, based on the truths that we're learning. Okay. Okay. But if I, if I find shenanigans, I'm going to let y'all know. <laughs> Tabitha, thank you. Okay. Chapter 28. On the following day, the gods departed with due ceremonies after the manner they came and returned to their kingdoms and thence down to the earth, each one to his own division. And each of the three gods went to his own chosen mortal who had power to see and hear spiritual things. And the gods possessed them by their presence and inspired them to write the words of Anusahaj, alias the Lord God, word for word, and they were so written alike and like in the three great divisions of the earth. And copies of them were made and filed in the libraries and in the houses of philosophy of mortals. But when these matters were thus entered, and in answer to the, to the queries of mortals as to the origin of man and his destiny, they were not deemed sufficient by the learned men. Many of them said, the Lord God hath evaded our questions. <laughs> then Satan came to each of the three gods who had the matter in charge. And he said unto them, consult with one another as to what shall be done. So Osiris sent messengers to Tan and to Sudga, asking them to come to Ag-Ho-Aden, his heavenly place for consultation, for consultation. And in due course of time, Tan and Sudga came to Osiris to his throne where they, were received, where they were received in great honor and glory. And presently, Osiris's marshals cleared the place, so the interview was private, for even the marshals stood afar off. Osiris said, What shall we do without a creator in fact? I know not if my judgment be beside itself, for it is said that they that lose their reason... All right, son, love you. Mm -hmm. For it is said that they that lose their reason are the best to discover it. The time was when Deus, our much loved God, said, whilst he labor on the earth for me and my kingdoms, behold, I will rejoice, I'm sorry, behold, I will reciprocate in all things. Neither shall ye ask for aught, but it shall be granted unto you. Yeah. Look for something? No, I'm, oh. I want to answer. Oh. box to Okay. We gotta go get this stuff from stores and from the wee whack and the blow and stuff like that. Too. Okay. You gonna get it while you out with them? No, I'll get it when I come back to you. Okay. Do you want me to order one or you wanna see if they got one at a uh, Walmart somewhere? Oh, okay. Cool. All right. <clears throat> Daddy, no, 
You can open it up down there. See, I think it is. I've seen this here. I can't Yeah. Like the whole section down in the freezer is for all the vegan plant based stuff and up in the refrigerator on the other side it's all, all the vegan plant based stuff over there. All right. Okay. Verse five, page three forty six. Who yet? Ooh, we at an hour. Okay. We're gonna end after this it's after this shot for y'all. We'll see. Cause it's Sunday I might read one more chapter. We might read one more chapter. No, no brown sugar. It's regular sugar. Um, you can put milk Daddy, and butter. Daddy, Daddy. Okay. Verse 5, page 346. Osiris said, What shall we do without a creator in fact? I know not if my judgment be decided so, for it is said that they that lose their reason are the last to discover it. The time was when Deus, our much loved Lord God, said, Whilst ye labor on the earth for me and my kingdoms, behold, I will reciprocate in all things. Neither shall ye ask for aught, but it shall be granted unto you. Hear me then, O my brothers. In my complaint, mortals have asked us to know the origin of man and his destination and to know the cause of good and evil. These things I submit unto our Lord God and Horat to learn his will and decree. I mean, you would think before you decide to take over the world that you would at least have the answers to some of these most basic questions humans always ask. Why are we here? And who is God? Where is he at? Where did he come from? I mean, y'all been living thousands of years, my G. And y'all ain't picked that up yet? Okay, very good. Do not walk around with them. They got to have a meeting. They said, look, I don't know if I'm beside myself or not. <laughs> but those who, who lose their reason are the last to find it. Now, how we answer these questions from the humans that we're taking over? Look, I'm going to read five again. Osiris said, what shall we do without a creator? In fact, I know not if my judgment be beside itself. For it is said that they that lose their reason are the last to discover it. The time was when Deus, our much loved God, our much loved Lord God, said, Whilst ye labor on earth for me and my kingdoms, behold, I will reciprocate in all things. Neither shall ye ask for aught, but it shall be granted unto you. Hear me then, O my brothers, in my complaint. Mortals have asked us to know the origin of man and his destinations and to know the cause of good and evil. These things I submitted unto our Lord God and Horat to learn his will and decree. Thereupon he sent messengers to me, announcing a feast, on which occasion he would answer the questions of mortals satisfactorily. Oh, don't keep that door closed and flies coming in here. I'm sorry, y'all. There's a fly that just came in here. The front door. The front door was open for me. They closed it already. Verse 7, thereupon he sent messengers to me announcing a feast on which occasion he would answer the questions of mortals satisfactorily. Ye and I went to the feast and Deus hath furnished us with something which is nothing. <laughs> For mortals can also perceive that the Lord God has, hath said is one and the same thing that was said by the gods through Zarathustra, and moreover that the questions are still unanswered. Deus is my friend, and I desire not to press him further on the subject, so I have called you to learn of how ye manage the same issues. Tan said, before our heavenly kingdoms were confederated, Anusahaj professed that he would announce himself the head and front of all created creations. Shall we say his courage is less? And so excuse him? Sudga said, when he should have said, I created man in my own image, behold, he hath weakly said, let us make man. Is it not clear then that he shirketh from the responsibility and desireth ourselves commingled in the pitiful story? Kind of like what um, they do at the different levels of government, right? The federal government, if they don't want to handle it, we're going to push all the responsibility back to the states. Let the states handle it however they so please. Like, you bring something up, well, well this is what we say. You don't like that?
Take it back to your states. Let them answer it for you and whatever they say go. Sudga said, when he should have said, I created man in my own image, behold, he hath weakly said, let us make man. Oh, okay, I get what he's saying now. Okay, he said, instead of telling everybody that I created man in my own image, he, he threw us in the mix and said, let us create man in our image, in our likeness. So now he made us a part of his shenanigans. So now we, we got to answer them. <laughs> okay. I'm going to read it again. I know this is my 14th time reading verse 10. I'm going to read it again. Okay. Suga said, when he should have said, I created man in mine own image. Behold, he hath weakly said, let us make man. Is it not clear then that he shirketh from the, res that he shirketh from the responsibility and desireth ourselves commingled in the pitiful story? Hear me then, my brothers, I am asked how I have answered the issues with my own division. And I say unto you, I have been in the same quandary and have not answered at all. Still in the same quandary today. Still in the same quandary today. Look, now I'm thinking about the video that I did trying to answer this same question. I'm like, God damn, I'm going to take that video down. <laughs> That's what I'm sitting here thinking. Like I did a whole video and I was going... And on this particular, I had quite a few people email me, ask me, so how do you explain this? I was like, first of all, my G, I can tell you of a certain that it wasn't Jesus in there that was saying, let us make man in our image. No, I'm going to tell you who was there. There was a group, right? But it wasn't just God. It was the angels that were present, right? So I went through this whole dissertation on how, remember everything that was created? I'm going to go back and watch that video today. I'm going to leave it up. I ain't going to take it down. Listen, though. I feel completely foolish right now. <laughs> but we're getting it right, y'all. So if y'all new here and y'all go back to some of my older videos, just know I'm correcting mistakes that I've previously made and taught throughout the years that I didn't know I was wrongly teaching. So just... Just bear with me, y'all. Listen. Okay. <laughs> Key. Grand rising. Okay. Verse 11, page 346. Tate, hold on. Let's just go back. Read verse 10 again. Suga said, when he should have said, I created man in my own image. Listen, y'all. Bella, y'all going back up there, all the way up there. Take your, 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 your nephews and your niece with you. Verse 10, Sudga said, when he should have said, I created man in my own image, behold, he hath weakly said, let us make man. Is it not clear then that he shirketh from the responsibility and desireth ourselves commingled in the pitiful story? Hear me then, my brothers, I am asked how I have answered the issues with my own division. And I say unto you, I have been in the same quandary and I have not answered at all. Tan said, neither have I, but that we may be justified in doing so. Behold, the Lord God said unto us, I bind you not to my words. <laughs> they should have, in these conversations going back and forth with one another, they'd be like, bro, we got to get from under his rule because we know, first of all, he is not the Lord, right? He is not the creator of all. We sitting here talking about how we're going to further deceive people, knowing that he deceiving us and he pushing his responsibility back on us to further create more deception. He said, you ain't got to hold my words, just create and say whatever you want to do to keep them quiet. Verse 11, Tayan said, neither have I, but that we may be justified in doing so. Behold, the Lord God said unto us, I bind you not to my words, nor limit you save that I have spoken shall be the foundation. Now, it is clear that if we admit that sin is in the world, we must find a way to justify the Lord God whose servants we are. If he be not justified, then is sin justified. For mortals perceive good and evil understandingly, but to justify a good God for permitting evil is not an easy matter. Oh, but did they do it though? Listen, 
Look, listen to what he just said. Listen to what he just said, which is one of the main arguments and conversations and dissertations and books written within not, well, I would say Christianity, but also my Hebrew brethren and sistering talking about the, the, one of the main topics that I see a lot of them, the, we're trying, I ain't going to say we, because I ain't trying no more. I realize, yo, this is completely wrong through and through. They're trying to justify killing men, women, and children. How does a good God, how do we justify a good God doing evil? Because this is evil. This is murdering. How do we justify this? Right? Listen. Verse 12, page 346. For mortals perceive good and evil understandably like they ain't dumb, bro. But to justify a good God for permitting evil is not an easy matter. For in the breath we praise him, we must praise his works of which sin is apparent. And in the same breath that we condemn sin, how shall we glorify Deus? For have we not proclaimed him the foundation of all things, the head and front, before creation was created? Was not this our battle cry to urge our angel warriors on to overthrow Jehovah? And hath not our loud praise Lord God said, let us make man? A child should have more courage than this. <laughs> Look, at this point, y'all should have known that y'all done screwed up. You know what? It's time to head back to Creosha, be my G. We're going to leave this like this, and we're just going to roll out. We're just going to go back. We're going to apologize. Omar's great spirit, the ever-present, the void. We are sorry. We are done wrong. We're going to clean up our mess. But they asking us to do something that even the mortals know is foolish. <laughs> Look. Hold up. I'm going to play with my title today, y'all. It's a few things I wanted to put in my title. I ain't going to be able to fit everything. <laughs> we just say clickbait. Technically, my titles aren't clickbait. Although, if people don't watch my video all the way through, they'll think it's clickbait. So, I'm using the concept of clickbait because I know people nosy. Ooh, what's she talking about today? Click. And then, they'll, I'm, just, I'm, I'm using my titles to get them to click in in hopes did I say enough or some shenanigans in the background to keep them long seconds. enough to seconds. hear the truth? Like the first 30 seconds. First 30 seconds. <laughs> so that's the method of my madness and using all the emoji, the cartoon things, right? Yeah, so we'll see. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. And I can tell who don't watch my videos by the ignorant yeah. comments. What? What? I, and I don't say nothing. I say, I can tell that you didn't watch the video. <laughs> and then... You know what happens when I respond to them when they leave an ignorant comment? Oh, I can tell that you didn't watch my video. They go back and they delete their own comment. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's funny. I, look, I, I be calculating, testing, watching everything, writing down like my numbers, statistics. I literally, with the, I literally, I write down every day. Y'all look, hold on, let me keep my place. Every day, I write down, like, the number of, not that I'm looking for subscribers, but the subscribers tell me what's really going on in the background. And I look at the analytics um, that YouTube gives you in the analytics section on who's actually watching the video. It tells you based on the account you made. So if people are, like, telling the truth or <clears throat> like you're a woman and you create your account, if you answer that question, it'll tell you how many males are watching, how many females are watching, the age ranges of the different ones. So the, the majority I had, and I was shocked, I have an even base. It's literally half and half of my subscribers, half are women, half are men, right? And the, the, the most watchers are from my age range. The next watchers are the younger generation, and then the, the least amount of watchers in this group is from the older generation, like the generation from my mom and older. My generation, the biggest group of my watchers come from. Then the next to that is the younger generation, like my children's generation. And the least amount is the older generation, which I understand that because the older generation kind of set in their way. Sometimes not saying my mom, but you get it. Um, but it helps me really understand on what people are really looking for what they're listening for. And I'm not really adjusting my message to get followers. 
I really want to see who are really, who's really like searching for truth. And so that's why I just read straight through it. Of course, you get my shenanigan stories and stuff that happened in my background. But um, I'm not like teaching lessons that I sit there and think about and plan. I'm just simply reading from a book, seeing what people are really searching for. And a lot of people who actually do like their, their own studies, what I can tell you, people who are used to hearing like a good message and all this stuff, those are not the people that come and stay here. The, the people that I get here are the ones who actually like waking up and using their own brain and want to, um, uh, like they're searching for truth. But you, you got some of those people that's just, oh, if it ain't good, we're going to flip. The itching ears, all that stuff, they don't stay on the channel long. And the analytics help me see that. So I'm like, this is, this is interesting how this grows. And also with certain topics that I talk about, the biggest amount of views is not that... Uh, Say if I use something in my title, like say a, a real hot topic. So I want to learn how to, I want to hit stuff, but stay away from, from topics that will cause the channel to grow inorganically and bring the wrong type of people here that's just here for gossip and stuff. I don't want those type of people. So I'm careful about the titles that I use, although sometimes I may use something in the title about the vid or something like that because it's something in the video on the reading that day. But let me tell you something. If you go back and look through my channel, the videos, videos with the highest views is the ones that's been like world news that everybody's just, ooh, they're trying to, they being nose. Ooh, girl, what they said, what she say about it? You know, those are the highest ones. And the one with the most views is like 14,000 views. Um, it came from that whole, uh, Passover, it came from Passover last year, Passover last year when they thought th this young rabbi in Israel, they were saying that he was the Messiah, right? He's marking off all the take marks, doing this or whatever. They say he's going to do this, he's doing this, and he can do this. I'm like, I did a whole video debunking that right there and who created this hype people thought they were going to come to my video and find out oh yes the messiah is here he ain't the messiah he's a man first of all we don't even believe in messiah like they talk about messiah some people you should see the comments under that video <laughs> people thought they was coming here for gossip or for me to hype them up that jesus is here or he over here i got a good even mix of nasty and nice comments for that video but that video was more so to teach you about the truth and how not to be hoodwinked by people and the shenanigans that they're doing throughout the media right they said well prophecy is coming to pass i'm like you could say that but they created it of course they're causing their prophecies to come to pass because they created it and so well, how can you explain this in the wars and the rumors of wars and over here in israel i said because they control everything I said they wrote the story. They're carrying it out with their players. That's exactly what's happening. So don't get yourself all up tight and all this stuff. And then another one with the next highest viewers was, I didn't even want to get a title to that, but that was answering or responding to a video that one of our dear brethren had done about a certain topic. Um, and I was just bringing out the scriptures because the scriptures were being twisted like, I ain't, I ain't going to say twisted like I ain't never seen scriptures twisted before. But here's what was unique about this particular video that I was answering a question to. Although what the person was saying, was it technically twisting the scripture? You had to be really, really careful. What this person was saying, they were not technically twisting the scripture it was the tone of their voice and the inflections on how they portrayed the message that was giving the wrong understanding of what the scripture said. I keep it at that. Those of you, some of y'all been here for that. Um, just not to bring any more to that, just to give you the example on what it was. They was twisting the scriptures. And I realized with that video, there was a lot of people who were, stuck in that particular let's just say there were certain people who were stuck in a particular lifestyle who saw this person's video that sent me emails like okay of all the people why would you send me an email asking about this 
Because they, these were people who lived a certain lifestyle and they wanted to be free of this lifestyle and to have somebody that they truly respected in the scriptures come. And although, like I said, didn't necessarily twist the scriptures, it was the way that they they talked about the scriptures and the in, intonations of their voice that it made it seem like this could possibly be what the scriptures were saying. Like, you could get that right off. Like, hold on, what, what is you doing? And he was like, I'm not. No, not me. The person was saying, I did not say this. And you didn't. You didn't say that. You didn't say that about the scripture. And what you, the words you spoke out of your mouth was true. But the way you framed the words with the sounds and tones of your voice completely taught a whole different message that was screwing some people up. People who were trying to get free of a certain lifestyle. And I didn't even realize there was a, it's a big group of them that watch my channel. I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, father, uh, maybe I should just respond to this video. But before I responded to the video, before I just made a video about this person, I actually reached out to them. And I reached out to them because we had talked before. Right, so I was like, okay, there is no indication that he's just gonna come. I keep saying that this person is gonna completely ignore me, right? I was expecting to get an answer back. Sent a couple emails, completely ignored. Now I know you read it, cause I got my read receipts on, so somebody read it. <laughs> and I don't think, based on what I know, I don't think there's anybody else checking your emails. So I know you saw it and you purposely ignored. So then that's when I decide to do a video to answer the question. And I kind of address the person in the video saying, I sent you an email, you know. So, but then that person did a video and I knew they was talking about the, re the, the response that I did to their video. And, he would, and they went on saying, I did not say this. And you were right. You didn't say, you didn't say you, you, y'all, y'all, y'all understand what I'm saying? They didn't twist the scripture like they read it like word for word. That's what was so crazy about this. They didn't twist it and they said the correct words and the correct everything. But the way that they presented it with the raising of their voice when they got to certain things and the way they softened up certain things, especially when talking about David and Jonathan, would lead somebody to believe that David and Jonathan had a relationship other than brotherly love. Yeah, so a lot of get back to that. You know what video I'm talking about, Set Apart Living? Yeah, so I noticed with the trends, I, I said all that to tell you where it's not, it's, my titles are clickbait, but not clickbait in a way to get you to do something else. The titles from my video are clickbait in a way, but it's something that actually we talked about or something in the video. And I pull out the catchy stuff in hopes to get you just to listen long enough to see exactly what I was talking about. And I hope with that, um, a little bit of light can break through your darkness if you have questions about things. Yes, this is exactly set apart living. It wasn't what they said, it was how they said it. And if that if that wasn't a great example of that particular phrase right there, it's not what you said, it's how you said it, right? Did the same type of thing come through when you texting? The tone is like your your tone deaf when it comes to texting. And a lot of people, they don't, if you're using all caps, we don't know if you're yelling at us or if you're just super excited, you know? So with some people using caps all the time, look like, wait, why are you yelling? And be like, oh, uh, um, just simple things, something that could be like, yo, that's just anything. I'm trying to think of something. Um, but y'all y'all get what I'm saying. Somebody could, te could text it to you in all caps, like super excited, but the other person could think you yelling at them like, whoa, whoa, hold up. Because first of all, and they respond, and then they get a message back like, wait, what? And then it just start unnecessary arguments because the tonality is wrong and the perception of what was said was wrong. That is what was completely wrong about that particular situation right there. So it was a whole lot of people. I noticed the views from that particular thing. And it wasn't like people, some people really did want to know, but the majority of the views was from people being nosy, right? How do I know they're being nosy? Because after that video, they die away. 
right? And so it's like, okay, the people that should be there should be there. I want to make sure I'm getting true because I got a lot of ground to cover because I've been doing this since like 2013. And all the stuff that I realized that I was wrongly teaching, we got to correct. So all that I know to do to correct things that I've done and just data and all those things is track so I can see how well or how effective I'm really being. I just write stuff down and I check back and I look through the analytics and everything. So, but yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, let me go back here. Hold on. And I started talking about that because, um, yeah, the, the Let Us Make Man, the video that I did about that and how I see now that that was all, that was all chopped and screwed, the video that I did about that. So, but yeah. Okay, so let me go back. I'm going to read verse 12 again. For mortal, verse 12 on page 346. For mortals perceive good and evil understandingly, but to justify a good God for permitting evil is not an easy matter. For in the breath we praise him, for in the breath we praise him, we must praise his works of which sin is apparent. And in the same breath that we condemn sin, how shall we glorify Deus? For have we not proclaimed him? For have we not proclaimed him the foundation of all things? the head and front before creation was created was not this our battle cry to urge our angel warriors on to overthrow jehovah hath not our loud praise lord god said let us make man a child should have more courage than this suga said it is plain we all understand these issues and perceive also what is required of us for since death have less for since death hath left us liberty to add to his doctrines according to our own judgment is it not well that we agree upon a doctrine even as death professed prior to the confederacy and thus give it to mortals osiris said this is wisdom O my brothers to make our lord god the creator we must account unto him all things both good and evil wherefore shall we give two masters to man one being the serpent of the earth the lowest inspirer and the other the voice of our lord god verse 15 suga said my brother have spoken wisely did he i mean i guess there was some wisdom in that because it showed and worked on us up until this point <laughs> Sudga said, my brother hath spoken wisely, and yet is the term two masters the wisest term? For in declaring the Lord God the highest, we must make him master over the earth also. Tan said, why shall we not adopt the Eolan of the ancients, substituting the words Lord God, and make a commandment over man, forbidding him to hearken to the serpent, Least he be led away from the Lord God and throw the cause of sin upon man for violating the Lord God's commandment. Y'all see what he just said? Osiris said, most wisely spoken, my brothers, for by accusing man through the serpent, we clear the Lord God unscathed. So they said, let's hear what we're going to do. Since we can't even figure out what we're going to do. And because we have to attribute everything to the Lord God, so we just going to attribute good and evil. So when man come along and they do something that we can't answer, we'll just make man think they done screwed it all up, right? So we'll let Adam and Eve have their little soiree in the garden. And so when Eve is overtaken by the serpent, she'll cause her man to sin. And by that, by them doing that, they'll cause the entire race of man to fall. Let's just blame it on them in the garden. Boom. That's going to work. <laughs> Listen. Verse 15, I'll read it again. Sudga said, my brother has spoken wisely, and yet is the term two masters the wisest term? For in declaring the Lord God the highest, we must make him master over the earth also. Tayan said, why, sh why shall... We not adopt the Eolan of the ancients, substituting the words Lord God. 
and make a commandment over man, forbidding him to hearken to the serpent, lest he be led away from the Lord God and throw the cause of sin upon man for violating the Lord God's commandment. Osiris said, most wisely spoken, my brothers, for by accusing man through the serpent, we clear the Lord God unscathed. Boy, I tell you, all these shenanigans and what they got to go through just to fool humanity into believing that they are true when they are really false. Bruh, but it's going to work for a while. Okay, so we'll be at an hour and 30 minutes. We're going we're gonna to pause. We're going to pause right here because the next chapter is 44 verses, and I don't think they're going to be quiet long enough for me to get through another 44 verses. So we're going to pause right here at an hour and 30 minutes today, beautiful people. What is? And we'll pick this back up tomorrow. This is good. All right, y'all. So it is Sunday. Happy Sunday, July the 24th, 2022, day 167 of year four of reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets. And of the four year consecutive day count, day 1185, we read in OOSB. The Book of Wars Against Jehovah, pages 342 to page 347. Bronze Yogi, peace, peace. You just coming in? We about to go out, bro. You know what? First of all, while I said, bro, I don't know if Bronze Yogi is a male or female. I'm sorry if you're female and I said, bro. I'm sorry. But, I mean, you can tell me, but you don't have to. I just like to make sure I'm addressing people appropriately. But if you decided to change, I'm going to just say this. If you decided to change what you are and not, cl not classify it male, okay, all right, bruh, we're about to go out. If you decided to classify yourself as other, when I refer to you, I'm just going to say them. I'm not, you know, I just, you know, we ain't going to get into that. <laughs> but y'all, let me tell you, the human race <laughs> Has sometimes, at sometimes, completely, I would say completely, lost their marbles. If you thought people changing their sex from male to female and vice versa was bad, first of all, hold up. <laughs> There's a couple of things I want to say. I just thought about something. Me and my husband was laughing at last night. Okay, so the first thing I was about to say is, if you think human beings have completely lost all their marbles by changing, by choosing to change their sex and then going to the doctor to get changes and stuff. You must not have seen some of the humans who don't classify as, as a human, but they now classify themselves as animals, right? And they have handlers. Y'all, when I say, first of all, there's a pass out I used to sit under. He said, it would be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. But let me tell you something. It was pathetic, and I laughed my butt off. To look at some, I mean, it was, it, it was sad, but I couldn't believe the foolishness of some people to actually try to turn themselves into dogs and into cats. Y'all, I'm going to have to go find a couple of these videos for y'all. When I say I laughed so hard, my stomach was hurting, I was crying. Me and my husband... He was like, this is, this is, this is garbage. <laughs> and then you had other human beings who were enabling them to do this foolishness by walking them on leashes. Like they put themselves like, wait, they got to be going to a costume party or something. Because I'm like, ain't nobody in their right mind. And clearly they were not in their right mind. They was like, well, I identify as a dog. I was like, this has got to be a spoof show. This is a spoof show. This has to be a spoof show. Yo, there's a whole documentary on people who decide, you know, I'm just done with the human race. I'm going to be an animal, right? Not an ongly, a talking animal like us, like uh, the Algonquins called humans ongly, talking animals. No, they literally wanted to be transformed into an animal that has tails, a tail and walks on fours. And some of them actually began to walk on all fours. Y'all, this was, this was so stupid. I'm just like, like, no, is this, this got to be like a new reality series where they're acting 
Yo, they were not acting. And at a certain point in time, after you actually doing this and believing this, your mind actually clicks over. And you literally begin to lose common sense. And another spirit comes in like it puts your human spirit in a sunken place and raise up Fido to control your body. I'm just like, this has got to be, I can't believe this. I was like, no, this, this is crazy, right? Okay, so that was that. I'm going to share a couple of those things. Not to make fun of those people, but sometimes I don't know whether I should laugh or not laugh. Or what may be appropriate or just wrong to laugh in the face of people. Sometimes I get that wrong. <laughs> Sometimes I laugh. I think I would like to think that I don't do it to be vicious. <laughs> but I really be caught off guard. And in the midst of my laughing, I realize, girl, you shouldn't be laughing. I'm like, oh, shoot. I'm sorry. Like, he was for real. Oh, I, I'm so sorry. I, like, I... I I find myself in a lot of those positions just because it's like this, this, that, that really can't be real, right? Okay. So I'm going to share that. And another one, I, I don't think it's going viral, but I'm going to see if I can find an article. It was on uh, YouTube. It was an article and somebody did a video on it. It was about uh, a dude who was a, a, a transgender and he was taking like the hormones and all that stuff to really transform his body to be a woman. Um, so in the process of doing that, there was a crime that was committed <laughs> and this person went to jail, right? And so because he identified as a woman, they put the transgender into a female prison. I'm like, <laughs> and so I went through and I was looking at stuff, and you can tell, you know, that that he he was possibly homosexual, maybe, you know, just by looking at and watching him walk and switching and everything, you could possibly tell. Okay, he really not into the opposite sex. He's really into. Um, the the same sex, so to speak. Sometimes it, it 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 I I don't really understand it because sometimes you have people, and this is what baffles me. You have maybe a man that identifies as a woman, and a woman that identifies as a man, and they may go through the sex changes or whatever, or may not. But what happens is when they go, it's it's confusing. When they go to get a significant other or a lover. They still pick the opposite sex, and the person that they pick is like the opposite sex. But it's not when they come. It's weird because they still got the opposite. Hold on, how do I explain this? They still got the equipment of the two opposites coming together. So them coming together is still natural because you still have a vagina and a penis that's coming together. But the one with the vagina wants to have a penis and the one with the penis wants to have the vagina like you're a man and you want to be a woman like you're you're a man and you want to be a woman so you go look for a man right and then you're a woman and you want to be a man did i say it right you're a woman yeah. see it's confusing yeah, it is. <laughs> but the thing is when the, the transgenders come together, it's still when they come together, they're doing it the way you create, the creator created. You still have the opposites coming together, which produces life, right? It, it's confusing. It's crazy. I'm just like, okay, so why don't y'all just flip back to what you originally were and still come together? But I don't want to be a man. I want to be a woman. It, it, yeah, it, you have to malign the truth some type of way, but you're still coming together doing it right you just look wrong it's yeah. it's weird you know um so i said all that to say this article was about this transgender dude who wanted to be a female identified as a female they sent them to jail right in a women's facility right so i'm just like when they said i'm like i know was something something about to happen in a facility Cause you know people locked away, hormones still raging. Ain't nothing done about the hormones. Two women, real women, who were born women and identified as women, locked away, 
got pregnant. I'm like, not one time, but twice. Two women in jail is pregnant by a transgender. And what was crazy to me is the officials are trying to figure out how this happened. First of all, you lock the man up with women, right? And so you got, I made a comment <laughs> on this video. I normally, I don't comment on people's videos, but they were probably going to delete me anyway. <laughs> Because this particular channel is known to do, the, and here, here's what's crazy, y'all. Here's what's crazy. I stopped following a lot of Christian channels just because of the shenanigans and the, the stuff that I understand now is false. But I noticed some Christian channels, it seems to me that the title, we're, and here is real clickbait, right? Maybe, maybe they're, it's not clickbait. They really are talking about what they said they were going to talk about. But if you are a channel that's supposed to be religious, at least in my thinking, if people come in here to get fed spiritually, why are you always talking about the news? You know? And so that's where I realized how they get a lot of their viewers and followers. Like channels like this, who's supposed to be Christians, preaching the word of God, you're nothing but smut TV for the Christians. That's literally all you are. And the entire ministry and stuff is built on Picking out the stuff that the world is doing, talking about it here. You're doing nothing more than really gossiping. Um, and that's how the channel grows. And so it's not really, and that's what I kind of look, I look at their comments and the comments of a, of a lot of people is just people that's just there just to give their opinion. And nobody's really being taught or right from wrong. It's just a bunch of gossip going on in the comment section. And it is abundant. You got billions of comments going on. The, the, the channel is 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 growing massively all because of everything that's being portrayed and the foolishness going on now had they been teaching against it in in a way like listen the creator created created you as a man like teaching on that they wouldn't have nearly as much follow i'm sorry okay but yeah so it, it doesn't cause your channel to blow up um Oh, my, I just saw your, your comment. This is when we was talking about the people wanting to be animals. Yeah, um, just go back to that real quick. She said, like, King Nebby K was involuntarily changed. Yeah, when you're acting like an animal or something other than yourself, like, you really do lose your common sense for a moment in time until you can gather it back and you're delivered from that. But, yeah, it's the same thing with people who are, um, they want to be something they want to be something that they were not created to be, right? The creator creates all things perfectly. He really does. And for us to think that we can just change it at any given time, we so choose. I mean, I guess it's your choice because he, he allows you to do it. And apparently, the creator allows you to see the thing through just to see, okay, it, he's hit. I believe at this point, going through all of this by letting the false gods rule and take over and stuff, he said they, they need to come to the end of themselves to really see that this is not life. What does this lead to, right? Even lifestyles like that, it leads you to heartache, pain, disease, loose booties. I mean, <laughs> like seriously, men, men and women, they, they experience things in their body that should get them, get them to consider their ways. Right? Like, okay. If this was appropriate, if this was right, if this was natural, my body would not be doing this or this wouldn't be happening. Like, all these things going wrong, these are like check engine lights that should go off inside of you to let you know, wait a minute, let me consider this path. You know, even though the world is getting on with, oh, let them do what they want to do. They can, they can change and be whatever they want to be. You know, do as thou wilt here on the earth. It's like the, the creator, he was like, I've given them all free will to do, to do whatever they want to do. Let them see it all the way to the end for themselves. I'm going to give them the opportunity to learn from their mistakes. And, and a lot of us, we don't seem to be understanding that lesson. And we take it to the grave. And if you, if you don't learn that lesson here while you still have your flesh, oh, buddy, it's going to be pretty tough. When you when you no longer have the ability to ground your spirit with the flesh that you're given to help realign it, right? It's a blessing to have flesh, right? 
It's a, it's, a, it's a terrible thing to try and get under control, especially if it's, it's gotten out of control. Like y'all hear me say, man, get your dog under control, right? Your dog meaning your flesh, your own body. Because a lot of time the, 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 the body is leading the flesh. The, the I'm sorry. The flesh is leading the spirit when the spirit really should be controlling the body. And that's a long process for people. So whether you choose to be something you're not, whether you want to be a another... What can I say? Whether you're a man and you want to be a woman, or you're a woman and want to be a man, or whether you're a man and a woman and you want to be a horse, it's like... I'm going to just hold my words because if the creator's like, just let them see it all the way to the end. I'm like, really? Let them see that to the end. Like, my G, they're on the floor on their hands and knees eating out of dog dishes. Let them see it to the end. I'm just like, okay, I'm out of my own business here. I'm going to just do what's right, and I'm going to be a light. And if you're in darkness, you can look into the direction of the light and do as you see me doing. If you perceive the light, I'm throwing off. But if not, I stand with the creator. You're going to need to see that to the end, my G. <laughs> All right, y'all, that's it. I'm going to share those with y'all. I'm going to share the article about the, the person who identified as a woman and got two other women pregnant in jail. I'm going to share that with y'all. And I'm going to share the, the dog people with y'all. That's probably really bad. Like, that's probably offensive. I don't care. <laughs> I'll see y'all tomorrow, but I don't care in the hopes that you come to your senses and realize that Okay. All right, y'all. With that being said, I'm going to probably just get myself in trouble from this point. So let's go ahead and get out of here. I love y'all. And I'll see y'all back here tomorrow morning at 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And may the Creator's light shine upon you so brightly that there is no misunderstanding in who you were created to be. Walk uprightly as men and women. Walk uprightly and the Creator created us to do. Right? So walk in truth and in spirit and in good common sense. I love y'all. I'm going to share these articles in a couple minutes. All right, y'all. Peace. Go ahead and end the pool.